I've been using the S23 Ultra for a while now, and its battery life is definitely pretty good. But just how long can it last when I'm on data for hours and taking lots of photos? This video is a bit different because it will not end until this phone dies. Also, this is a pretty exciting day because I'm graduating from uni. I'll be taking grad photos with a camera and the S23 Ultra and comparing them. And I'll also talk about a feature of this phone that unexpectedly drains quite a lot of battery. Okay, so at 11 a.m. I get up, shower, and then just do work for four hours because I had quite a bit of work to catch up on after traveling. But at 4.12, I unplug the S23 Ultra and start getting ready to take grad photos. I've definitely been looking forward to graduating, but kind of can't believe that it's actually happening. So I put on some makeup, I change my phone's resolution to 2K just because it looks a little sharper, and I have the adaptive refresh rate and auto brightness on. And I recently switched to this theme, I think it looks so cute. Then I walk to campus and start taking my photos. Even though the S23 Ultra's cameras are really good, arguably the best on a smartphone, for this occasion, I still wanted my photos taken with a quote-unquote real camera. We're using the Sony a7 IV specifically, and this is because I really wanted just nice, soft, out-of-focus backgrounds for my portrait shots, which is one thing that the S23 Ultra can't really produce. As you can see in these shots, the S23 Ultra's main lens in the regular photo mode produced pretty much no background blur at all. But the camera produced a very nice and smooth blur that I think helps make me stand out in these shots. However, the portrait mode on the S23 Ultra did surprise me with how good it is. Like the grass down here gradually becomes more out of focus. So it looks quite natural and not just like a blur filter slapped on. The segmentation around me is pretty good too, but it's not always perfect like here with my hair. But overall, I'm really impressed with these portrait mode results. I also noticed that there's quite a difference between the S23 Ultra's selfie video and photo. In the video, the flowers behind me look soft and blurred, but in the photo, they look pretty terrible with a lot of sharpening artifacts. The color also seems to be less saturated. Anyways, let's go to a different location now. And there's quite a lot of construction on campus. It's a bit unfortunate. We just accidentally found this place. Look at how pretty it is. It's like a super quiet little courtyard. This place just has a very quiet and peaceful feel. And I love how my photos here turned out. My full frame camera aperture is set to f2.8 here. And with everything else equal, the lower the f value, the stronger the background blur. I snapped one with the S23 Ultra at the same distance. This isn't the best photo, but you can see the background does have a slight amount of blur, although it's far less than my camera shot. And this is because the S23 Ultra's main lens generates about the same amount of background blur as a full frame camera with its aperture set to about f7. We're almost done taking grad photos. So far, I'm really happy with all the shots that we got. Now I'm heading to the main library on my campus. And by the way, in addition to taking photos and videos with the S23 Ultra, I also occasionally connected it to my camera through an app so that I can see the framing myself. And I also went on Instagram a few times to get some inspiration for locations. When outside today, the screen automatically went to max brightness and I had no problems with seeing it. I took some more portrait style shots at the library and these are probably my favorite ones. I just love the framing and the angle. I also wanted to throw my cap, so I took some burst shots with the S23 Ultra. I haven't used the burst feature in a while, but this was the perfect opportunity. All right, we're done with grad photos, heading back now. So I wrap up at around 8.08 p.m. It's about four hours since unplugging the phone, and it's now at 71%. While taking my grad photos, I did use the S23 Ultra quite a bit, including using Google Maps and even the satellite layer due to all the construction blocking many paths. And I was also on data the entire time. After getting home, I eat some food and then I take a look at all the photos taken today on my computer. I'm pretty satisfied with them, but to get the best results, they really need to be edited, which is one slightly inconvenient aspect of using a camera. In contrast, the S23 Ultra's processing always does a good job at preserving the highlights while also exposing me properly. So those photos don't really need to be edited at all. At 9.30, I pick up my phone again and see that after being idle for one and a half hours, it dropped 3%. I just scroll through social media for a bit. And then I remember that some of the photos I got had construction equipment in the background. So I try to erase them using the object eraser tool in the gallery. 
and I think it did a pretty good job at removing all of these yellow lines. I'm also glad to have the S Pen to be able to draw precisely around all these thin lines. But yeah, I think the Magic Eraser can be super helpful. It's very easy and intuitive to use. I think it's nice that there's a removal tool built into the photo gallery, so you don't have to use Photoshop or some other third-party tool if you just want like a quick fix. This entire time I was on Wi-Fi and by 11 p.m. my phone had dropped to 55%. After this, I just did some things on my computer. Maybe it was work or maybe I was just looking at Etsy shops, I don't remember. But at 12.30 a.m. I decide to call it a day and go to bed and the phone has dropped another 4% in the 1.5 hours of idle time. Overnight, I just left the S23 Ultra with all of its regular settings. It was connected to Wi-Fi the entire time. Personally, I like to set my always on display to show always because I like to be able to see the time just by glancing at my phone. I know this option uses more battery, but the next morning I was still a bit shocked to find out that it had drained 15% over approximately eight hours. So now it's at 36%. My S23 Ultra is draining quite a lot of battery when it's just being idle, which is obviously not great. And to check to see if the majority of the drain is caused by the always on display, I decided to repeat this test a few days later, but with the always on display off. I kept all other settings the same, and the result was that the phone drained only 3% over 13 hours. So the always on display is definitely the main culprit behind the drain. If you're concerned about the battery life, I'd recommend just turning it off or maybe switch to the tap to show. It's kind of a shame that the always on display drains so much battery and keeping it always on will shorten the battery life quite a bit. I wish it could more intelligently turn off similar to how the iPhone 14 Pro will automatically turn off its always on display whenever you put it in a bag or a pocket. Anyways, so I eat some food while watching videos on the phone and then I just spend the rest of my morning working at my computer until about noon. By now, the S23 Ultra is down to 30%. Since I'll be leaving Toronto very soon, I decide to visit campus like one last time. Yesterday when I was taking grad photos, it was a bit hectic, so I didn't get to take it all in. Today, I just want to walk around slowly, revisiting all the places that I spent a lot of time at. I listen to a podcast while walking, and of course, take some photos and videos of campus. This building was where I had my first comp sci class here at U of T, so it felt very nostalgic. I love these big windows. There's barely anybody here today, so it was super calm and quiet, very unlike when I attended class here with like hundreds of other students. I also visit the U of T bookstore to look at some graduation merch. I pick up this grad bear. I think it was literally the last one in the store at the time at least, so pretty lucky. And then I just continue walking around. I take some 10 times zoom photos. Getting this amount of zoom is equivalent to using a full frame camera with a 230 millimeter lens, which is typically very massive. I'm glad to have this 10 times zoom. It can definitely get some shots with a pretty unique and cool perspective. I return home at around 2.30. Over the two and a half hours, my phone went from 30% to just 3%. It's hanging on by a thread. This is a pretty massive drop. I was on data the entire time and that likely contributed a lot to it. And then I start packing up. I'm taking down my filming set today, so this will be the last time you see it. This will also be the last video from me in Toronto because I'm moving to Los Angeles. So my next videos will be in a completely new location, which hopefully will be more fun. Okay, so the time from when I unplugged the phone to when it died was 23 hours. Looking over my usage, I estimate about 14 hours where it was just left alone, and then nine hours where I was using the phone in some way. I definitely did some things that tend to drain a lot of battery, like using the GPS, using the camera, and also being on data for several hours. Setting the AOD to be always on probably shortened the battery life by a few hours too. I love seeing the time and the little picture on the AOD, but moving forward, I think I'll set it to tap the show to save on some battery. Let me know if you guys want a full battery test with the S23 Ultra against the iPhone and several other phones to see how it does in a more scientific way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you did. You can also follow me on my other socials and you can watch more here. I'll see you soon.